This week on Marketplace Middle East, a special look at Tunisia. We are betting upon three fundamental aspects. Reinforcing education, further reforming our laws and regulations in order to accentuate the integration of our economy, further improve the basic infrastructure. The Prime Minister of Tunisia on his country's building blocks for growth, plus economic shift to drive for technology to move Tunisia up the value chain. It's been ranked the most competitive economy in Africa by the World Economic Forum. It also has one of North Africa's highest per capita incomes. The economy kept on growing in 2009, although growth slowed to 2.8 percent from 4.5 percent the year before. In the midst of the global economic crisis, Tunisia saw lower demand from its largest export market, the European Union. But the average annual growth rate over the past decade was an impressive 5 percent. I asked Prime Minister Mohamed Gounouchi how Tunisia aims to keep up the pace. This is the principal challenge that we face. And in order to achieve growth of 6 or 7 percent, which is necessary if we are to resolve the employment problems and if we are to reduce the divide which separates Tunisia from developed countries, we are betting upon three fundamental aspects, reinforcing education and improving its quality, further reforming our laws and regulations in order to accentuate the integration of our economy, further improve the basic infrastructure. Across these three areas, we are counting on a reinforcement of investment from the private sector, in particular in areas of great added value, of high technological content, and it is only in this way that it will be possible for us to attain 6 or 7 percent. In a world, uh, Prime Minister, where everybody is resistant to globalization, especially in the developing markets, Tunisia says that's the key to future growth. Is there no resistance from your population to globalization? We have begun numerous reforms in order to integrate our economy into the Euro-Mediterranean area. And the crisis of the last few months only reinforces our choice. It has allowed us to maintain growth on a viable and sustainable basis. And it is for this reason that we believe that globalization, even if it comprises risk, offers a tremendous chance to emergent countries, which have mostly modest markets, to be able to have heightened growth and durable growth. That is Tunisia's credo. Do you think that after this global recession, particularly in the West, there will be political impetus to get the EU MED agreement signed? We hope so. We continue to hold meetings between the Euro-Mediterranean countries so that we can advance further along this path. And it is true that in the institutional framework, there are some difficulties. The projects which are being prepared concern three sectors, the environment, transport and energy. And in these three areas, there are projects which have been presented to the Union for the Mediterranean. And we are waiting to see if they can be finalized so they can be acted upon. You've expressed real concern about uh, protectionist measures, uh, particularly within the G8 countries themselves. Uh, is there any motivation to get that Doha trade round finalized to uh, assist the developing countries like Tunisia? Again, we hope so. There have been some positive indications, above all the agenda of the last meeting between a certain number of ministers from the region. The Doha cycle, if it is finalized, will be a very strong signal for relaunching global commerce, and it can contribute to the resumption that is beginning, that is to reinforce it. Once again, Mohamed Ganoushi, the Prime Minister of Tunisia. Up next, they look at Tunisia's high-tech ambitions, an ambitious program to boost growth and climb up the value chain.